I grew up in the Army, so I was born on a military base, and I served with uh, the 10th Mountain Division in Afghanistan. I serve the United States Army for the Special Operations Forces. I've deployed four times in support of uh, operations in Afghanistan and Iraq. As an artillery officer, uh, I was an infantry platoon leader, uh, and in 2008-2009 I was a, a battery commander, uh, infantry company commander. I was in the Marines in Al-Assad, Ramadi, Habania, al qaim as an electronic intelligence analyst. I was in Mosul, Iraq. I was a combat engineer. Uh, I actually got my U.S. citizenship right before deployment, uh, before heading over to Iraq. In 2006 and 2007, I was in the Katamiya neighborhood of Baghdad, attached to the 82nd Airborne as a civil affairs team leader. This is the Continental Divide up to our right, and we're going to parallel the Continental Divide with just a little bit of rolling up and down as we go through these next seven miles. I'm James Baylog. I'm an environmental photographer and I'm the uh, director of the Extreme Ice Survey. I'm here in partnership with the Sierra Club to bring a group of veterans uh, from the U.S. Army and the Marine Corps and show them how the landscape has changed while they were over fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're right now on the edge of the wild stuff. And you get beyond these few key trails and it's, uh, you know, it, it belongs to the grizzlies. Uh, I really haven't had a chance to experience the outdoors, so this is why this is so exciting for me, the Sierra Club's uh, mission outdoors. You know, for the most part, I don't get it outdoors as much as I probably should. This is something new. This was an amazing opportunity to come and hang out with other vets, um, where I could just be myself. I didn't have to filter my mouth and <laughs> be careful what I say. Well, when I first came home from Iraq, I couldn't repress the trauma. and. And at night, then it got harder and harder to stop the nightmares. And eventually in the outdoors, I was able to find that I couldn't think about anything else if I wanted to be successful in what I was doing. So it pulled me out of my head and it pulled me right into that moment. This is what makes sense to me and I've, I've got to make sure as, as many other service members and veterans can have these types of experiences. People, especially vets who are coming back, have this yearning for something and they don't necessarily know what it is. There's something so simple and meditative about putting one foot in front of the other on the trail. And all you're thinking about is, where am I going to step next? OK, I thought it was, uh, it was going to be a lot of little cottages all over for people to, to stay at and, and, and a few campgrounds. The trail ended about a mile and a half, two miles before we got to our campsite and we crossed a couple streams and we went through a pretty hellacious hump to get here. It just looked like something you would see in a movie. It was like it was made for us. I've never seen anything like it. The spaces beyond the pavement are what's beautiful about America. It's beautiful that in America we've set aside huge tracts of land to make sure that people can come out and just enjoy and be in this wonderful space. Glacier National Park is one of the crown jewels of the American landscape. And this place is going to need a new name in 30 to 50 years because there won't be any more glaciers. All the ice will be gone because of the impact of climate change. So I've been interested for the past half dozen years to bearing witness through photography to how this landscape is changing. Here's some shots we have of Grinnell Glacier and it shows where the ice was over the past century and a half. And it's pretty incredible compared to uh, where it is right now. 
So, I mean, to me, it's incredible to imagine this basin basically filled up to the brim with ice. I mean, if you look at this, this isn't going to be around for our children. <laughs> no, they will come, the, our children will come up here and see a lake, period. This glacier will be a memory for my grandchildren. It'll be Glacier Less National Park. I don't think it is a question about whether or not we need to save the glaciers. I mean, the problem is the glaciers are melting way too fast. And so it's not about saving the glaciers as much as it is saying, what are the glaciers telling us and how do we respond to that? So how many of you, is this the very first time you've ever been in crampons? Me. I didn't even know what crampons were. <laughs> okay, so we're two and you. We're out here climbing with Conrad and Anchor, the man, the myth, the legend. He's been through so much in the mountains, and he brings a perspective to the world and what we're doing that in many ways is so similar to our own. I mean, he gets that this is what we're fighting for. So grab it like this, bottom hand. There you go. The other thing about Conrad is he's a lot like a first sergeant or a gunny sergeant in the Marines. He really loves to yell, and it's all about building character. He had the one-liners to like keep you motivated, but also keep you keep you honest with yourself because he, you know, he was like, hey, the stuff that we're doing is dangerous. This is not a game. I'm sliding down. Ah! And I want to roll over. And then that's your self-arrest. Using the ice pick to do a self-arrest when you're uh, sliding down some ice, that was probably the, the coolest and also incredibly helpful if you find yourself in that situation. Who's up first? It's going big! Come on! Okay, Rass! Good job. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just about uh, well, probably 4.30 in the morning and we're having our wonderful breakfast and coffee and oatmeal here before we get going. Supposed to move out around five-ish, head up the mountain. Conrad said he was building character out here at 4 a.m. wake up calls to climb a 9,500 foot mountain, a part of that. <laughs> How good you're gonna feel standing on the summit! 30 minutes! If we were airborne, you'd slap the person next to you and yell 30 minutes. Slap the person to the other side of you, yell 30 <laughs> Remind me of, of going through some military training, you know, it's time to build some character today. I think it's awesome that everybody has an opportunity to get up early and see the night sky and the stars and it's going to be a fabulous day today. sliding all over the place. You know, I had a good 20 feet to spare, no worries. I jump out of airplanes and uh, I feel more in control with that. That's more of my environment because I have a reserve parachute. <laughs> Had a lot of emotions uh, coming up when we first crossed over the snow and we were getting ready to go to the rocks, so it, it, it touched me. opportunity to be up here and to experience this and to be higher than the helicopters are flying is pretty cool. I've never done anything like this before. Every year hundreds of people go to Everest. I don't know how many summit but 
It's pretty cool to recognize that we're maybe the only Summit team this year on Blackfoot Peak. This is uh, the top of everything I've done. It's been tough. I mean, I've had the, the voice of a few people that have kind of rung in my head today um, who would probably be right behind me if they could, but but there's guys out there that you know, they signed the dotted line just like I did. And, um, and I am one of the lucky ones. Um, I've got two legs, two arms, ten fingers, ten toes, and a pretty good brain still. Um, it's amazing out here, and it's just good for me to get out here and see what makes this country so great and why we should fight for it. I tried to think of every stressful thing I could think of, and up there, looking down above the clouds, nothing mattered except me and the rock I was sitting on. That, to me, was the closest I think I've ever been to whatever they call enlightenment. I think a lot of veterans, we, we come home and we feel like we've already done the most intense, important thing we're ever gonna do in our life in combat, and that's not true. You can keep pushing yourself you can continue to challenge yourself. You can find that edge and ride along it. You still have so much to give. You have so much more to become.